This is the cheapest supercar in the world. All right, so before this video gets started, I do want to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, Simply Safe. Simply Safe is a whole home protection for every window, room, and door, inside, outside, against intruders, fires, water damage, medical emergencies, and more. And many of you guys know we are here at the Goon Squad Garage. This is basically our home. We are here all the time. And of course, there are some times where we are away and we've had plenty of scares. We had people walking all across our property, cars pulling on. We have even had somebody walk with a hammer to our glass entry door. So with this Simply Safe kit right here, they have everything that we need to get rid of all of those worries. And and the cool thing about Simply Safe is they have 24/7 home monitoring protection by professional Simply Safe agents ready to dispatch police, firefighters, or EMTs in an emergency. And they have advanced response technology to confirm that the threat is real and get the help there fast. And guys, this kit right here will get delivered straight to your door and I got to say to set this sucker up, it is extremely easy. Within minutes, we already got the app working and the cameras recording live. Also guys, Simply Safe costs less than a dollar a day and there's no long-term contracts so you can start and stop with no hidden fees. So guys, if you want to save up to 40% on your Simply Safe security system during Simply Safe's biggest sale of the year, be sure to visit simplysafe.com/goonsquad to customize yours. And don't forget guys, there's no safe like Simply Safe. What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today we are here at the new Goon Squad garage and today's the day that we finally finish up our Factory 5 GTM supercar and all we really got left to do on this sucker is just a few little things that are minor and major and one of the major things is actually this thing still needs framework which I think we're gonna bring out some big hammers and we're just gonna do that sucker by hand and also I think the suspension needs to be adjusted a little bit alignment needs to be just tweaked and then I think this sucker will be roadworthy other than the next major issue which is figuring out why this sucker idles so rough or runs so rough it's hard to start it and it idle it just kind of sounds like it's cammed out which it's not cammed out so there's definitely a problem maybe some bad fuel maybe some bad spark plugs or like a bad ground or something like that so we're gonna dive into that very first and just kind of just look around that engine bay area and see if we can figure that out that way we can take this sucker down the road and then after that i think we're gonna do a little price breakdown for you guys which what do you think that sucker looks like? A million dollar dude, car? Dude, it looks like a supercar, dude. It does, and that's exactly what it is. It is a supercar, but it looks super expensive, but you know what? It was actually super cheap, which I can't wait to reveal to you guys all the numbers. And once we do all that, then we're gonna move on to the next build, which is our Porsche Turbo right here. And I'm super excited to announce that the parts are in town on a trailer somewhere. So they were supposed to deliver it. I called them up, but you know what? We might even pick it up to make things faster, dude. We need them parts. We man. need them, dude. They were supposed to deliver them yesterday, but they still haven't unloaded like yep. a trailer or something. But you know what? At least they're here, dude. Yeah, if they're here, if they're somewhere in town, that just makes me excited right there because this sucker is going to be starting to get put together here really soon. But anyways, let's focus on this G TM here. Let's see if we can probably figure out why it's running so rough. Then we'll just go from there. Tell you what, I think it might have a hidden cam in it. Is that a chance? That's not a good cam though. A hidden <laughs> cam is not a good cam. I know, we did the first thing that we thought was the issue, which is the terminals. They were kind of loose a little bit, change that out right quick. Yep. And what's the next thing you think that the it is? The next thing I say we should just go ahead and plug in a OBD2 OB plug. OBD2, man. OBD2 plug. We need to plug <laughs> one of those suckers in, see what kind of codes were popping up. 
and uh, see what, what's wrong with this thing because this thing is just idling really high and it stays idling, doesn't want to drop. And when it does drop, it kind of like sounds like it has a cam. It's kind of almost like it's misfiring a little bit. Maybe the air to fuel ratio is not mixing properly because I hear it sucking in air. I can hear the cold air, but it's like- and You can almost see it spitting out like, um, I don't know if that's fuel or something. <laughs> Maybe that's just normal because I mean, it's like basically straight pipe right there. Yeah, so. that's probably just regular like water I don't see no fuel. Something. I just see like black soot, which that's a normal thing. Yeah, right? that's probably just a normal thing but we need to get this thing running optimal because i mean it's just all over the place it was running perfect when we first started at the house yeah. but over time when it sat here maybe there's a uh something wrong with the fuel maybe the fuel filter is clogged but i don't think it would make it run high idle but who knows we're gonna go through this whole entire thing and see what we can do That sucker sounds healthy dude, now, man. Running perfect, just like I remember, dude. Dude, that is so awesome. And it's crazy how you found the issue. So you kind of just assumed that it was a vacuum leak after like going through a few little things. Yeah. And then we decided to get a smoke tester, dude, right? Smoke tester. After I plugged in that uh, the computer, it said some kind of manifold pressure loss or something like that. So it's like, that's definitely a vacuum leak. So we went to the gas station, bought a little smoke tester put a vacuum hose to it and we got our leak in the very back which i believe something on the back of this manifold is actually cracked it looks like where a vacuum line plugs in and they had a cap over it but that little tip that sticks out broke off so we may have to just end up getting a whole new intake manifold yes dude. sir but that's pretty crazy man it was way back there the only way that we were able to find that was with that smoke test yeah. which that smoke tester is not for human consumption. Don't no, even think about it, guys. That's just for finding vacuum leaks. I mean, we rebranded it to a vacuum leak tester, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those suckers are not good for your health, so you got to be careful with those. But anyways, super happy to have this sucker running like it is. Amazing dude. sound that this thing lets yeah, out, and dude. and we let it idle, and we let it, like, uh, rip a little bit in here. You know, put it on the rev limiter a little bit. And also, we let it go up to temperature, and the fans cut on, and everything just sounds proper, dude. dude. This thing is super sweet now that it's back to a uh, road worthiness you know dude, what i mean just a little bit of tweaking on that suspension man we can go hit some streets exactly dude. but also while we were working on this in the midst of it all we got a call from the company dude. that our porsche parts are finally in after dude, five years five dude. ten years man and look at this man a whole big old box apparently there's a rear bumper in here there's a spoiler there's a trunk deck lid there's fenders, there's everything that we need to get this repair done, dude. dude. I'm super excited about this. I say we unload it off the tractor, tractor, nice. <laughs> off of the TRX right here and cracks this stuff dude, open. Let's do it.
out, guys. First things first is we just dropped some brand new hoodies on the website. Dude, these suckers are super fire. Brand new design with the dang sun at the bottom. These suckers are super comfortable as well. And we're only dropping a handful of these suckers. So be sure to copy one and help support your boys. But second of all, the most important thing is all these parts that you see in front of you right here, dude. And these are, of course, our Porsche 911 turbo parts. And this is going to allow us to finish that sucker up. Well, finish dude. the entire framework, finally get this thing back on the ground, weld it up and everything like that. And what you see is the GT2 RS kit with the carbon trunk lid with these massive scoops, the massive wow. carbon <laughs> wing, which looks absolutely incredible. There's winglets that go on the side and stuff like that. Got our other couple parts for the trunk area. And of course our rear bumper with the GT2 RS style. Look at those exhaust ports, dude. dude. That's gonna go straight back from that turbo Boom. right there and it's gonna sound so good, We're gonna have man. to build a custom exhaust for this we thing, We sure dude. will because they sell one, but that sucker's like $7,000. We're gonna weld one up, dude. Make it sound even better. And also some carbon fenders for the front, the GT2 RS style. We're still waiting on carbon louvers right here, which we don't need those to put this car together, dude. No, Not sir. right now, dude. No, that's all like the finishing touches, yeah, man. Dude. This is exciting, This man. is exciting because we already got our front bumper here. We already got a carbon hood. We already got a carbon <laughs> roof on this thing. And the carbon rear, this whole entire thing is gonna be man. all carbon. It's gonna look better than a GT2, honestly, dude. I'm telling you, dude. This is a, definitely a one-of-a-kind GT2 RS because this is actually a 911 Turbo, yep. which apparently these might be faster. I don't know. We'll put that to the to test, test if somebody got a... If somebody want to race. Somebody got to, <laughs> but anyways, I guess we're going to save that for another video right there because, yes. you know, we got a lot of work that, on our hands over there, but also we want to get this GTM finished dude, up, dude. The GTM is almost done. I mean, we got this thing running like a top. Now we need to get this thing on the streets, and what we're going to do is probably jump on this front suspension, mess with this thing, fool with that a little bit, adjust a few things, and hopefully get it dialed in. Alrighty guys, so it is actually the next day here and last night we did a bunch of suspension adjustment and also we messed with a few other things underneath this car as well and we got this sucker sitting just right super low. We're actually kind of afraid to take this sucker down the road because if we hit a bump, that tire could actually damage some of that fiberglass or some of that body and we do not want to do that. So we're going to be extra careful but we never showed you guys the underneath of this car ever so we're just going to quickly take you guys under here. Look at this. Of course this is incomplete because we still got to do framework. We got to put a bunch of like panels Aluminum or panels. They completely surround that thing yeah dude. it looks super nice but the rest of this car is complete it looks super sweet super flat this sucker is super aerodynamic i believe this thing has been like wind tunnel tested and it's extremely insane how it performs i think they tested it to 200 miles an hour dude exactly this car is intended to go that fast and it's intended to compete with like the ford gt the celine s7 and apparently this is a better performer than those cars hey dude. this car was built to compete in races actually like exactly. on the track dude. this is an insane super car right here and of course you got the transmission sticking out right there you got some coolers hidden over here super flat we did a couple repairs here and there but anyways guys it is time to do a price reveal for you guys and we're not going to do the typical thing of like wheeling and dealing because we don't have that many different prices dude. this is the cheapest supercar in the world right here possibly dude. the cheapest car we own to date honestly che i think so i think dude. so i mean s2000 is probably more expensive than that's this what car, i was honestly. saying dude but anyways <laughs> Very first price is what we got this sucker off the auction for, and I'm gonna go ahead and say it, dude. $17,193.50, dude. Dang, son. 
Honda. That's cheaper than your normal Honda Civic, I'm dude. I'm telling you, that is super cheap right there. And we were mainly just focused on buying this car for the engine, but turns out we were able to fix the whole entire yes. thing because that engine is worth that right there, yes, dude. Yes, sir. The engine and the Porsche transmission. Dude, LS6. But anyways, next thing is the OEM parts. Of course, we ordered from Factory 5 Direct, and we got the hood, which was the biggest part, and a few other little components like headlights, little things Glass here and there. And stuff Glass. like that. And that was $5,405.50, dude. Yeah, that's pretty cheap for parts, Not dude. bad. Factory Not bad. parts right there. And then, of course, we got some ZR1-style wheels on here for $1,095. And then some random suspension, $300. Steering rack, $955. And then the paint job, pretty expensive, $2,000, dude. Worth it, dude. I'm Beautiful. telling you. So that gets us to a grand total. Give me a drum roll, dude. dude. <laughs> Let's see, That gives dude. us a grand total of $26,949, dude. Dang, man. What? The that's, cheapest supercar to date that I'm, we own, dude. 100%. That's basically $27,000. That's just insane, guys, right there. And we're just super happy to see what it looks like. Would you buy that thing? Dude, for that much, you I, want think, it? I actually think we got an insane deal on this thing. But I've seen these things sell for upwards of hundred to $150,000. No. Like serious? 100%. Depending on the build, right? Yeah, depending on what you do to these things. Because wow. uh, you, can't, you can't stop building. You Dude, just keep doing it. For sale, guys. Come and get it. I'm <laughs> telling you, come and get it. How much? would you sell it for honestly seventy five thousand. no i would not sell no? this thing because this thing is just beautiful you would never see anything like this i dude. guarantee and i would never build one from this scratch, is like a table. collectible yeah we'll never build one. very but anyways it's time to drop this sucker down fire it up maybe go for a little test rip Alrighty guys, so we just made it back from that little test rip, but you know what? I almost lost steering, dude. About halfway through, it just became super loose. It was like driving a school bus, dude. <laughs> That's crazy. Bad. I noticed that you were kind of just wandering all over the road, and yeah. we actually found the issue right yeah, now, Yeah, this dude. little rod right here that connects the steering column to the actual uh, rack itself was super loose. There's two bolts. Luckily, we went ahead and found that. There's a little area that we tightened it up super tight, and now there's actually zero oh, play right there. Awesome, so that's, that's pretty sturdy. At first, I thought we had super bad alignment, but it was just a crazy amount of play. But now, I guess we can go ahead and cruise around a little bit we more. We can. This thing looks so good Dude. cruising down the road, too. Super low, and you're avoiding some of the potholes. Yeah, and being, kinda... being very careful. I don't really hear much unless I'm, like, pulling out of, like, the gas station was the worst because it was, like, super slanted. It kind of rubs a little bit, but... It all looks good, dude. All looks good, and there is a few weird smells as well, Always right? weird smells, man. It just smells like Fruit Loop Bowl in here, dude. It's just like all kinds of like sweet smells, but you know what? That's just what? Residuals or Residual, something like that? Residual, dude. And also, possibly the tape off that intake manifold may be coming off as well, because we didn't oh, duct yeah. tape. Oh, it yeah. It did start idling a little high, so I say we go ahead and slap another piece of duct tape on there and probably go do some more cruising. So we are back with the GTM after tightening up that steering and you said it handles a lot better. Still looks a little bit sketchy out there, a little bit rough, but you know what? This is designed to be a track car. This is not your everyday car. So I think that's just how it's supposed to be. But man, that's gonna be a wrap for this project. There's a few other little things that we can do like painting calipers, other little things here and there. But for the most part, we're ready to get back onto that Porsche right there. Get both of these track cars finished up and do some testing with them things. It's just crazy. And honestly, I think those tires that we got on it are the original tires. And that's 
that's the tires that the original owner wiped out in. So that might be an issue right need there, dude. Need some sticky tires on there. Definitely need some sticky tires. But you know what, guys? Definitely drop your comments and thoughts down below. What you guys think we should do with this thing? Should we test it? Should we sell it? We really got to do something with our projects that we're not working on anymore. But you know what? You guys are just going to have to let us know. But thank you guys so much for all the love and support. Definitely be sure to visit GoonSquad.com. Keep your noggin warm and copy one of these super fire hoodies. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for all the love and support. We'll catch you guys next time. Peace.